What's up, guys? This is Sim with Vengeance, and I'm back here with another Madden NFL 17 Detroit Lions franchise. And today, your 8 and 3 Detroit Lions are on the road again, taking on the New Orleans Saints here at the Mercedes Benz Superdome here in the Big Easy. As we are looking to go 9 and 3 on the year, and I don't know about clinching the playoff berth, but we're getting ever so close to doing so. And we're also competing for a divisional uh, title, so that's a big, big step in the right direction for this team. And uh, if you guys are excited for that, make sure you guys drop a like. Hey, if you're new to this at all, too, hit that subscribe button for more content like this, NCAA and MLB The Show. And I will get back to college basketball as soon as I'm done playing Madden, of course. But anyway, um, we are trying to face the New Orleans Saints. They have a high-octane offense, especially with Drew Brees and that um, – that gunslinging mentality. He, I wouldn't say he's a gunslinger, but he's he throws a lot. And that's pretty much the New Orleans offense in a nutshell. They love to throw the football. And they got a lot of good receivers on this team that can burn you downfield, like Brandon Cooks especially. Willie Sneed's coming into his own. Uh, they got Colby Fleener at tight end. They got C.J. Spiller in the backfield. This team has a pretty good offense, but their defense is kind of lackluster. That's part of the reason why they're 5-6. and six. Um, they got a really good offense, just not a good defense. And any realist Saints fan can tell you that. Their defense is just not up to par of where it needs to be. Mark Ingram is hurt for this game, so that's part of the reason why I didn't say Mark Ingram because he's been hurt. Um, but C.J. Spiller is still a good, good, uh, good running back to look out for. He could do some damage if you let him, and uh, we got to look out for that. So you see right here, we're going to take a look at the standings. Uh, Steelers and Ravens at 7-4 and four, or seven four apiece. And the Bengals right behind them at six and five, and the Browns are just dead last. You got the Jaguars at nine and two, and the Titans are really starting to fall off after their hot start. They've they've dropped to seven and five. The Bills still in the East at seven and five, and that's a pretty good division race as well in the East. And in the West, you got the Chiefs and Broncos at six and five. The Bron the Raiders right behind them in one game, uh, and you see right here we're competing for the NFC North. Both Packers and Lions at eight and three. And in the South, you get the Panthers. Pretty much one game away from clinching the division. They pretty much got that one on lockdown. And um, in the East, you got the Cowboys at seven and, or eight and three. Eagles, or not the Eagles, but the Giants at seven and four. And the Seahawks pretty much got that division on lockdown as well at nine and two. And, uh, and also, the notable key thing I forgot to mention earlier. You see that we have signed a player from the practice squad. If you guys call it a glimpse of that. We put Akeem Hunt... The former running back from Purdue. Uh, we decided to give him a chance in the uh, in the big stage of the NFL. Uh, we, we've been missing Amir Abdullah, and we need another good running back. And, and I'm not too comfortable with the third string running back that we have. And Theo Riddick cannot do it on his own. So we decided to call up a practice squad player in Akeem Hunt. He has a good speed rating, and that's one of the things that really caught my eye. And I know speed isn't everything. Um, but it is something, and we need to have a little bit more speed in the running back position. Not to say that Theo Riddick or Amir Abdullah aren't fast, but with a 92 speed, <laughs> you got to give the guy a chance. I mean, we'll see what he can do. It's Akeem Hunt coming in today for the running backs of the, for the Lions. He's going to start from here on out until Amir Abdullah is healthy again. And if you know he's productive, we may find a place for him on the team. Uh, you see Drew Brees coming out, the former Purdue quarterback, and coming out for their first possession. The Saints' offense is very dangerous. we got to look out for that today. Spiller takes the handoff and gets met by three Lions defenders for the first down. And uh, two carries, 11 yards early on for C.J. Spiller. Later on, it's third down and in inches for the Saints. This is what the Saints like to do, though. They like to spread him out and throw it. This is what Drew Brees loves to do. We cannot let him get comfortable back there. As Colby Fleener just drops the pass right there. That's going to be fourth down. And here comes Matthew Stafford, 3,100 yards passing, 20 touchdowns, 10 picks, almost 74% on completion percentage this year. He's having, I wouldn't say an MVP type season, but he's had a really good one. Third down and three here. We have Akeem Hunt on the right side. Moving over is Jones. He's going to look for that ball and get that first down. So we get it down to about the 33-yard line in our own territory. First catch of the day goes for 11 yards for Marvin Jones. Second down and five here, Stafford. Look into that one corner route that I love to use. It's Jeremy Curley. And you know how good Jeremy Curley has been this year. He's averaging almost 20 yards a catch. 
And man, oh man, he may be the unsung hero on this team. I mean, he's been, well, actually, he's been making quite a bit of noise. He's had one game where he had almost broken the receiving record for one game. And he has had a spectacular season. He may get to 1,000 yards. We may have a few receivers that pass that, that, that number this year. That'd be pretty neat. So second down and five here from the 11. Handed it off to Theo Riddick. And Theo Riddick, yeah, he's, like I said, he may not be getting as many carries, but we need a we need a running back that can not only do carries, but he can catch the ball as well. We get this one off to Marvin Jones, and he gets in the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. He's got his little dance going, and that's his first touchdown of the game, making it 7 to nothing. Third down and 10 here from the 25. Here's Drew Brees and C.J. Spiller in the pistol, dropping back. Looks over underneath, but Spiller cannot hang on. As Drew Brees only has attempted two passes, which is kind of surprising, considering how much they love to throw the ball. This is not a part of their game plan. So Drew Brees and Matthew Stafford looking over the middle, almost intercepted, but caught by Marvin Jones anyway. And uh, that was a dangerous pass, but enough to get the first down. And we still, they all count the same, right? Second down in inches. S toss sweep right to Akeem Hunt. He's got the speed to get to the edge. And get the first down. So now he's up to the 50-yard line. Akeem Hunt, like I said, practice squad player. We got him for about $600,000 for the rest of the season. We'll see how he does, though. We got to we gotta see how productive he can be if he wants to be continuing to play for this team. <laughs> we don't want to demote him back to the practice squad because, man, that would kind of hurt his confidence a little bit. We, he's finally got the confidence to get playing on the football field. We'll see how well he does. The only thing that really bothers me is that he can't, like, break tackles to save his life. But maybe with experience and maybe with time, he can work on that. We get that one off to Jeremy Curley. It's a first down, so second down and seven. Handed it off to Theo Riddick again. And look at Theo Riddick go down to the three or the two-yard line. Two carries, 21 yards for Theo. And it's a first and goal. Later on, next play, toss sweep to Akeem Hunt. And he is going to get his first NFL touchdown as he slips and slides into the end zone. And it's now 14-0. First career touchdown for the guy. Keep let, the, him, let him keep that ball because that is going to be something he's going to cherish for the rest of his life. Third down and 10. Shotgun formation handed it off to C.J. Spiller. And C.J. Spiller's going to not get the first down. He was just about a yard or two short. So we're going to go and try and be aggressive here. On third down and two, handed it off to Akeem Hunt. And he's not going to get the first down. We try to... Throw him off guard a little bit by doing the no huddle. Did not work. But we're still at 14-0. We still start with the ball in the second half. It's not a necessarily a big deal. We just got to not let it get to us. Second down and seven. Drew Brees doing what he does best. Spreading them out and throwing it over the middle. And that one is caught. And that is a first down. And now they're inside Lions territory. Second down and two. Here is, again, Drew Brees in the pistol. Brees, again, underneath to C.J. Spiller. Spiller breaking a couple of tackles. He's looking like Charles Sims against the Falcons out there. And now first and goal. About just a little over 10 seconds ago. 11 seconds to be exact. Breeze looking right side. Caught Willie Sneed. Touchdown New Orleans Saints. And it's now 14-7 to going into halftime. We start with the ball just to begin the second half. We'll see what we can do with it. And we've actually had better rushing numbers with the Keem Huntman lineup. As you saw, we had 75 rushing yards in the first half. We've done... Pretty good for ourselves in the run game so far. Hopefully we can keep it up in the second half. That's something that I would really, really be happy with. Second down and six at the 45. Here's Stafford looking over left side. Jeremy Curley again. And you cannot stop that man. You cannot stop Mr. Jeremy Curley from getting his in this game, especially with that route. It's cheese. So here is Stafford again looking underneath again to Golden Tate. And Golden Tate is going to dislocate his shoulder on this play. Or not this play, but some other play. He does end up getting hurt. So, spoilers. Sorry. But it did look very similar to what... The play was exactly the same play that he got hurt on. But we get the touchdown on the nonetheless on the drive. It's now 21-7. Don't worry about Golden Tate's injury later on. He will be fine for next game. Just saying. He'll be fine. First down and 10 for the Saints. Uh, strong eye formation. And they're going to hand it off to Spiller. And Wow. Meltdown of the highest order as he is not going to get caught on this one. Touchdown, Saints. It's now 21-14 uh, after that 75-yard run. <laughs> oh, God. That was atrocious. So now it's only a seven-point game still, but we got to come right back 
and just waste some clock because we do not want this to turn into a shootout. We get this one underneath the Ebron, first down to just move the chains. That's what I like to do. Just throw these little ones that get across the line, get the first down, keep the clock running just a little bit, and keep the clock management at a you know at its best. We don't want them to put up 40 points on us like we did with the the Titans game. That was that was bad. <laughs> Second down and five here. Here's Stafford once again looking over the middle. And this is the play where he gets hurt, I think. Yep, here comes the injury timeout. He's going to be okay, though. He's going to be okay. It's just a dislocated shoulder. He'll only be he'll be ready for next game. So, third down and four here. Stafford looks over the middle. It's intercepted. That was just a bad read. I thought I was going to get it over the middle of Marvin Jones on a quick one. Um, but I tried to pull a fast one. It did not work out. Backfired on me like a mmm. Well, that did not work. Third down and three. St uh, Breeze looking over the middle to Thomas, and Thomas gets the first down. Breeze, 6 of 10 so far for 63 yards, which is unlike Drew Breeze in this game. Usually at the third quarter, he's usually throwing for like 200 or so yards by now. But he's only throwing for 63 yards, and that kind of says something about this team, about how we've been able to contain Drew Breeze in this game. Because we've, we've been running a lot of plays that are not really – meant for like his type of like it's against his style and so we've been able to contain Drew Brees by just running a bunch of cover twos and a lot of you know short intermediate coverage route or coverage defenses which is something that Drew Brees loves doing just throwing quick ones over the middle or quick ones out over like 10 or 15 yards intermediate routes so to speak but we are here in the fourth quarter first and 10 here for the Lions and here is uh, Stafford trying to drop back, looking over the right side at Marvin Jones. And there's a flag added about 15 more to that with a face mask penalty. <laughs> no bueno, man. No bueno. You cannot do that. No, no, no. That You cannot grab my face. Do not grab the face. That's bad. Stafford again. Looking left side. It's Jeremy. Or that's not Jeremy Curl. That's Roberts. And uh, how did he? I don't even know how he dropped that one. That just... That just happened, I guess. But later on, third down and two. I almost thought he would have grabbed that, but I don't know how he did not come up with that. But we get this one off to Curly, and Curly's down at the one. Oh, man, Jeremy Curly. You're just you are so close. But you know what? We got our new guy. We got Akeem Hunt, and he's going to take it in for six as he's going to slip and slide in there again. 28-14. This one isn't necessarily over by any stretch of the imagination, but it's looking like that. As we do have a 14-point lead with two minutes to go. Knowing the Saints offense, they're going to be turning up the, the notches now. And we're, we're probably going to see something spectacular here from Drew Brees because that's what he does. But it is fourth down after all. Drew Brees is 8 of 16 <laughs> for only 75 yards. He has not played well at all. He hasn't turned the ball over, which is good for him. Um, but the way we've been able to contain him has been something that I couldn't, wouldn't at least expect. I would expect him to throw it for at least 250 to 300 yards. Breeze again, looking right side. It's caught. Colby Fleener first down. And Breeze now 11 of 20 for 96 yards. Third down and 10 here. Minute 22 left here in the game at the 44-yard line. Pistol formation. Breeze again. Looking to the right side. It's going to be. Oh, it's all so close. Willie Sneed could not get that one. And it's fourth down again for the Saints. Two timeouts left. Can they get something out of this? Keep the game alive. Breeze in the shotgun. Dropping back. Looks right side. A deep pass. And that one is going to be caught by Colby Fleener. Touchdown, Saints. Oh, my God. Killebrew had a chance at that one. But nope. No cigar. Onside kick. None of the Lions can get a hand on it, and the Saints recover. Oh, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, we are having a meltdown here in the Big Easy. It's not so easy in the Big Easy. Is it now? So, Breeze, again, looks, has time, a lot of it, and he gets it off Brandon Cooks. And on a broken route, Brandon Cooks gets in the end zone. Touchdown, Saints again. And it's now tied, just like that. Oh, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, what a meltdown. But we're going to get this one out to Jeremy Curley. The defense may be melting down, but the offense is not. They're trying to keep their composure. Stafford getting the team to the line. Stafford over the middle to Marvin Jones, and he gets it past midfield. 
Still have two timeouts left. We're still doing all right. Stafford again looking over the right side to Jones. First down to the 36, and we call a timeout. Now I feel like we're in range. We can do something with this. Over the middle to Jones again. Marvin Jones into the 24-yard line, and that is going to set up Matt Prater here for the game winner. And the kick is going to be on its way. Hold by Yates is good, and so is the kick. And the Detroit Lions win somehow. Almost having a colossal meltdown. We come out on top. 31-28 as the Lions move up to 9-3 on the season. Solidifying that they will finish above 500 this season. Man, that was close. We almost blew it. And this isn't the first time we've almost blown it. There were a few other games where we almost blew it, but we somehow won those games. So, <laughs> next week we take on the Chicago Bears at home. We beat the Bears last time, but it was a very, very defensive game. N neither team got a touchdown in that game. Where we, I think we did get a touchdown, but it was just like very, very bad. It was, it was not a pretty game. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like on it. If you're new to this channel at all, hit that subscribe button down below for more content like this. Until next time, my name is Sim with Vengeance. You guys have been amazing as always, and I am out. Peace.